Hi, I'm Mark Graham. Today I'm going to teach you how to swap out the igniter on the chimp. All right, to remove the control board, we're simply going to remove these two screws and pull the board out. But the harness right now is secured underneath. So the first thing we need to do is remove this bottom pan, which there's four screws holding it on. And that's going to give us access to cut some wire ties with the wire cutters. That's going to loosen that up so we can get the board out and get it unplugged. So first thing I do, I'll remove the bottom screws. Okay, now that I got this bottom thing removed, I can get underneath here and start cutting some ties. All right, so we removed the bottom panel. We cut the wire ties that are securing the wires to give us some slack. So next thing to do here is just to remove the two screws, holding the control board on. Now we have enough slack to remove everything. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unplug the RTD. Um, there is different styles of boards out there, depending on what model you have. This one simply has a plug. There is some models that have this style as well. The RTD actually goes into these and there's two small screws that you loosen to pull the RTD off. So depending on which size, uh, what style you have, uh, that's how you disconnect it. The plugs are the same. You simply pull them out and just start unplugging them. And there's board removal, easy as that. Now that we have the control board removed, we simply gotta remove this hopper. To do that, there's two screws here, two screws in the back, four in the middle, this thing comes right off. It gives you a ton of access, makes it a lot easier to get to the inside. You can do some of this work through the openings, but trust me, it's a lot easier to take this off. So now that I got the hopper off, you can see I got tons of room to do work. So next thing I do is just kind of free up the wire I need for the igniter, which is your braided wire. You kind of see it's ran through here. So I'm gonna kind of get it back out of the slot. So I got my igniter wire freed up. Now it's time to remove the burn pot. All right, so now pull the burn pot out. And if you look inside, you can see the igniter is sticking out about three eighths of an inch. That's what we want um, when we go to install the new one. So to remove this one, there's a screw here. These sometimes can be a little uh, tight. So spraying some WD-40 does not hurt that and uh, try not to break the screw if it's uh, been rusted in or something. But anyway, loosen that up, should slide right out. To install the new one, you basically want to put that in here to where you get about three eighths exposed, you can see in there, and you want to tighten the screw and secure it. But first thing we have to do is actually route this through the grill and then we will do the assembly inside here. So I'm gonna take the igniter run it through the slot and feed it into the burn pot area. Once I have it here, again, I'm simply gonna slide this in. Get my adjustment and secure the screw. should slide back in place and we'll secure the four screws and uh, we're all set right here. All right, so now that I got my new igniter installed, um, we're basically gonna put the hopper back on, get it secured with the uh, eight screws and then we'll get the control board installed. All right, so to install your control board back in place, uh, again, let's go ahead and hook your RTD back up here. Make sure it locks in place. If you have the other style RTD, take your wires. It doesn't matter which way they go. Put them in place and tighten the two set screws. And then we're just gonna start plugging components in. So the first one is our purple. That's gonna be your two braided wires, which is your igniter. Next one here is green. That's gonna be your auger. Next one is yellow. That's gonna be the purple. And of course, black and white is gonna be your power, which we'll plug inside to the black and white. Once we get that plugged in, now it's a matter of putting these wires back down in here, and we're gonna secure from underneath.
We'll re-secure it here with two screws. Then we're gonna go underneath and uh, to the best of your abilities, use a zip tie, get it back to basically where it was in the beginning, just to make sure that the wires are clear of the fan that cools the auger motor and the fan that feeds the fire. There's two fans there. You wanna secure those wires with zip ties just to make sure there's no interference. And uh, once you get those things secured, put your bottom pan on and you're good to go.